Hello, and welcome to our first episode in this DO254 Basics series, uh, otherwise known as Everything You Wanted to Know About DO254 But Were Afraid to Ask. Uh, in part one, we're going to be looking at the very highest levels um, as to what is DO254. And my name is Michelle Lang, and I'll be presenting this video today. Let's start by looking at the DO254 document itself. Uh, there on the right is uh, a snapshot of the downloadable version of the document. Something I want to point out, I'm going to highlight a few things. The first is the title. The title is Design Assurance Guidance for Airborne Electronic Hardware. There's a couple key terms in there that are important to understand. First is design assurance. Uh, you'll see that the term design assurance or development assurance uh, appearing in DO254 and similar documents. And what this is really referring to is, is following a, a structured approach to ensure that any errors um, injected in the process will be caught uh, such that an end product will uh, perform its intended function. So those are things, those are things that you're, you'll hear frequently to ensure that a device performs its intended function. So basically a structured process to make sure that any errors that could be injected into the device will be caught uh, such that the device does what it's supposed to do. Now there's more um, official definitions. You can find those on the uh, FAA website or even in the glossary of DO254 itself, but that's sort of the gist of it. Uh, the second one I wanted to point out was Airborne Electronic Hardware, which is sometimes shortened to AEH. So that acronym, AEH, you'll see um, in the context of DO254. We're here in, in discussions, and so it's important to understand what that's referring to. Something else uh, to point out, the document itself was prepared by um, the SC180 Committee, and this was a group of industry experts who worked for the better part of the 1990s on the document and published it in the year 2000. The development of DO254 through this committee work was done under the guidance of the RTCA. So the committee met um, and was managed by the RTCA. The development and the publishing of the document came under the RTCA. And that's why you'll, you'll see the document referred to usually in its initial um, writing as RTCA slash DO254. To learn more about the RTCA, you can go to www.rtca.org. And here on this website, you can see in their own words how they describe this organization. They say the RTCA is the premier public-private partnership venue for developing consensus among diverse competing interests on critical aviation modernization issues. Uh, it's important to note that when, when you're looking to buy the DO254 DO document, you have to purchase it from the RTCA. So you can go to rtca.org and uh, look up the document and purchase it from their online store. It's very important to note that this wasn't all done in the U.S. Uh, what I've described is the process on the U.S. side to develop uh, DO254. But in Europe, there was a parallel effort and a parallel working group uh, that was run under EuroK, and so they worked alongside SC180 to develop a document that here in the U.S. we call DO254, and in Europe they published it under the name ED80. And so you can go to www.eurok.net and again purchase the document and download it there in um, one of several uh, languages. You'd think that you could just buy the document and read it and understand it, but that's, it's not as simple as that. It, DO254, understanding what compliance entails, is really somewhat tricky. And there's, there's three main aspects of the document and of compliance that make it tricky. Uh, the first one is the scope. So the document itself, I mean, the charter of that SC180 committee was to develop guidance for airborne electronic hardware. And electronics, the scope was defined as being pretty much anything from the smallest component level to uh, a line replaceable unit, or LRU. So that's how the original document was written. However, when the document was invoked as official FAA policy, the scope changed. And I'll talk about that a bit on the next slide. 
The second thing that makes understanding DO254 a little bit difficult is the style, the style of the document itself. Now there's good reasons why it was written this way, um, basically so it doesn't um, get out of date and so um, many, you know, so it's not limiting in terms of, um, you know, how compliance uh, can be met. But the style itself for RTCA documents are non-prescriptive, meaning they don't tell you how to do things. Instead, they tell you what needs to be done in an objectives-based style. So they present an objective that needs to be met, and then you, as the DO-254 DO applicant, have to figure out how you're going to meet that. And uh, don't expect any examples to help you. Um, there are very few, if any, examples in the DO-254 document. Also, the date. The date is really the third aspect that makes this a little tricky. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the document was developed in the 90s. It was published in 2000. And just consider how quickly technology has advanced since then. I mean, it's now uh, 2013, 13 years ago. People weren't considering systems on a chip. Um, you know, today the lines between hardware, software, and systems are, are really blurred and intertwined when you're talking about system on a chip designs. And those sorts of things weren't considered, they weren't mainstream practices back then, and they're not included in the document. So it's, you know, there's a lot of gray areas in terms of what compliance means in, in the context of some of the advanced technologies that we have today. Coming back to the scope of DO-254 and how the document was actually invoked into policy. So it was published in 2000 and it became policy or was invoked, uh, as they might say, as policy by Advisory Circular 2152 in the year 2005. So five years after the original publishing, it was invoked as policy. And it was done so in a specific scope of application. In the words of this AC, it says, that DO254 now applies to manufacturers and installers of products or appliances incorporating complex custom microcoded components with hardware design assurance levels A, B, and C. So you see the scope there? It's for DAL design assurance level A, B, and C devices, and only those that are incorporating custom or excuse me, complex custom microcoded components. So I've under, underlined that because that really defines the scope. The underlining is not in the original text. Uh, the next sentence goes on to kind of clarify what they mean, uh, which technology this applies to. They say these custom, uh, complex custom microcoded components include application-specific integrated circuits, or ASICs, programmable logic devices, or PLDs, field programmable great gate arrays, FPGAs, or similar electronic components used in the design of aircraft systems and equipment. So DO254 was written to apply to all electronics and was then invoked to apply only to complex programmable devices. This was just the first uh, of four short videos in the DO254 basic series. To learn more, I would advise that you watch the next several videos and actually watch any other content uh, posted on this channel. Uh, there's a plan in place to put a lot of content here, a lot of valuable information, so you might want to add this channel to your lineup. And an important point I want to make is, you know, no matter how much content we post here, uh, it's really just the tip of the iceberg. DO254 compliance is very complex and constantly evolving, and you really need to seek professional training if you're serious about it, if you're faced with the first project or whatever. So the, the content we place here is really just the tip of the iceberg. It's really to kind of provide you a foundation to go into that, uh, you know, kind of training and consulting mode. Also, you can visit our website, www.logicircuit.com. When I say our, that's the company that I work for. I work for Logicircuit. And this uh, DO254 basic series was developed from a white paper I wrote called DO254 Basics. That's downloadable from our resources area on that website. You can also contact me if you have any questions. My email is down in the lower right-hand side. It's michelle underscore lang at logicircuit.com. Thanks a lot for tuning in today.